Hello, Richard Trovens here again at Artificial Lawyer TV. Uh, today we're looking at the Sally Alliance, which is a project that has been started in the US, which is trying to develop a common language to describe legal work. Um, I personally find this absolutely fascinating because it could alter the way that law firms approach pricing and also the idea of productization. Uh, with us uh, is Kelly Harbour, who um, helps out uh, with Sally, but also works at a US law firm. Hi, Kelly. Thanks for joining us. Sure. Thanks for having me, Richard. Uh, first of all, just very briefly, could you just tell the audience just a little bit about what you do? And then if you could just explain what is Sally? Sure. Um, so I am the Director of Client Relations and Innovation at Goulston & Stores, which is um, an AMLA 200 firm. We have about 200 lawyers. Um, and my role is focused on our um, growing our key client relationships and also from an innovation standpoint, looking at um, ways that we can work better together with our clients and move the firm forward. Um, I oversee, in addition to our key client team program, the practice group management function at the firm. Um, and it is both for that reason, as well as the innovation um, around the Sally movement um, that, that made me a, a, a core member of the team here. And so Sally um, stands for the Standards Alliance for the Legal Industry. Um, and um, it is a, a nonprofit organization that includes members that are, um, you know, corporate legal departments, as well as law firms like ours and technology companies um, and some academic institutions as well. So how do you build a common legal language, at least in the U.S., because this is a global issue, but it's starting in the U.S. Um, so what are you trying to do? So you're, you, you, you look, let's say an individual law firm looks at various matters that it has handled over a period of time. Uh, you try and extract specific items. You try to understand uh, the coding, the matter coding. Uh, you look at the pricing. You try to find benchmarks. You try to, how, how do you, I guess we're talking about taxonomies, aren't we? Yeah. So how do, how do you build this taxonomy? And how does it go beyond just your law firm? Because I can understand one law firm building a taxonomy that describes everything that it does. And even that would be difficult. But then there's a law firm in another state, but there's a whole bunch of other things, some of which are overlapping with what you do, some of which are not. How do you build, two ta how do you build a universal taxonomy? So it's a great question. And um, I'll give a, a tip of the hat to the founders who are um, Toby Brown, Adam Stock and Jim Hannigan. Um, and then, you know, members like our firm, where the idea is to sort of crowdsource how to describe legal work in a consistent way. Uh, a lot of firms that have come up with their own taxonomies like we had um, struggle with somebody wants to track something. And so you sort of muddy the the different levels of granularity with which you're describing the work um, sometimes you'll end up with things like industry that are mixed in with types of work um, and it, it's driven often by the internal politics of the firm and so the idea here is to get people together um, representing different parts of the legal ecosystem and to inform really a single way to describe the work and to make sure that it's really consistent um, and to sort of have that group of people talk about additions and expansions of the existing codes, because we're all trying to describe the same thing at the end of the day. Um, and we're all using slightly different nomenclature. Um, and one of the things that really appealed to us about Sally is the notion that it's, it's objective and viewer independent. So instead of an, um, in an experienced database or you know your financial system you know saying or your conflict system saying client and adverse party you're now saying you know plaintiff and defendant or landlord tenant so that you know you, you can have a better understanding of the way this matter is unfolding um, in addition to exactly what the work is that takes off the table the internal politics of which organizational unit, which most for most firms is a practice area, does the opening attorney reside in? Because that's often where some of the political conversations um, come into play and make it harder for firms to really get their arms around the makeup of the work that they're doing. I see. So you, what you're saying is, is that different partners or different practice groups 
will uh, code things differently, will see a job in a different way. So yes. if someone sees a review task and says, well, this is a regulatory investigation. And another partner says, no, it's not. This is just really basic. This is just a standard document review project and it's not a big deal. And but they, they're confessing it in a completely different way. That's right. That's right. Right. So, and we have some attorneys who are, um, whose practices focus on construction, for example, and they do both the negotiation and drafting of these construction contracts. And then when there's a dispute that arises, um, they represent the clients um, in the dispute. And they reside in either real estate or litigation in terms of a practice area. Um, and so whichever practice area they, um, they belong to, that's where all of that work goes. And what Sally allows us to do is say, understand and don't care that the timekeeper's in real estate or litigation, what is this work? Is this the transaction or is this the dispute? And that way you understand all of it. And it's all also tied by the area of law being construction. So you can look at all of your construction work and then you can parse out all of your disputes that include that as well as all of your transactions that include that. And, and so how granular do you get? So you would throw, so a matter comes up, client says, I have an issue with X, please help me. Okay, matter begins. What are you capturing? So, and then what are you measuring again? So you're, you're capturing, let's say, client has asked us to help with this deal. So negotiation, contract, bit of regulatory work, some filing, end of matter, storage, etc. cetera, Boom, done. Um, that so you're you're capturing that information and then you're giving it particular codes that are universal. Uh, are you also then adding in pricing information? Yes. So that is going to come down the line when we implement an experience database. Right now, so we've been applying the Sally codes to matters since April first. That's the start of our fiscal year, um, and so we're we're still really you know we don't have that much data yet. We've just got you know, four months of data basically. Um, and the idea is then certainly to layer in the way that different types of matters are staffed and looking at the costs of different um, types of work. In terms of granularity, the two basic units for describing a matter within the Sally infrastructure um, are the service and the area of law. And the service is really advisory, dispute, transaction, um, regulatory or bankruptcy. And then the areas of law um, are basically, we, we like to call it the thing you learned in law school that helps you understand how to deliver that service. Um, so it's real estate or it's tax or um, it's commercial law, um, that type of thing. And each of those has sub levels of subcategories. And you can basically determine how much you want to capture. We, we try to capture as much as possible from intake. And so what we've done is ask the attorneys to provide more detailed descriptions of the work up front. Um, and then we'll go back and profile later um, in our experience system some of the other um, attributes of the matter that are important to us. Gotcha. So, so the end goal, I imagine, is to have a universal common taxonomy, at least within the US, because it will change, obviously, by country by country, major jurisdiction by major jurisdiction, um, to get this universal taxonomy. That, that's the goal, I guess. At least, and then I guess you can build on that, but that's that's the primary objective. Exactly, that's right. So that being said, right, I'll be I'll play devil's advocate because I obviously this is a very good thing, but let's pretend I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why would any law firm want to do this, and how does this benefit the clients? Great question. And for a lot of law firms um, like ours, we had a a homegrown system um, or, or homegrown taxonomy for describing our matters that was flawed and again, you know, sort of built brick by brick when somebody decided that they wanted to track a particular thing. And it also has evolved over time where the, the firm has practices that we didn't have before. And so you end up sort of starting to capture things um, without having a full taxonomy. Um, and so you'd have to either try to keep up with the pace of understanding how the work the firm is doing and, and making sure that you're really um, capturing consistently the types of work, or you can opt in and leverage um, a really thoughtful 
set of codes that you know some of the brightest minds in, in the industry have have collaborated on um, and be part of that conversation so as a result of some of the conversations that we've had as we've started to apply the codes um, there are new values that that are present in um, in the sally um, lms because of things that we raised and the group agreed yes this is something that doesn't otherwise belong in, a, in an identified value for this particular field so we're going to add to it um, and i think the more people that you get um, contributing to that just the better the code set gets and you don't have to spend so much time internally you know with churn of creating um, a classification system you you know you have one that you know again has the benefit of uh, of these brilliant minds behind it absolutely so um how far have you got so you i mean how many law firms and other legal service providers because you don't have to be a law firm it could be a, a process focused legal sure. service business like elevate or united lex it could be one of the big four although probably not in the us at the moment <laughs> although for for some of the non uh, non-regulated work it could be some of the big four so you've got plenty of potential participants um, in this I mean very roughly where are you now in terms of participants and where would you like to get to so I would say the the vast majority of the members are our law firms and many are exploring um, and deciding whether and how they can implement um, the Sally codes when in in many cases you know they've spent a lot of internal currency coming up with their own taxonomy and um, to have to uproot that and go through that process again is daunting. Um, and I completely understand that. Um, but that, that's the majority of the members are law firms. Um, and Microsoft was the first, I believe, corporate legal department to sign on. Um, I've had a conversation with a client who was interested in looking at it. Um, you know, you, you asked before about the benefits to the clients, understanding both the work that they have, um, that they do, that they handle internally, as well as what they send out to outside counsel um, is a huge benefit. And the, the standard would really benefit from having their input as well. Um, just because a lot of things that they might do internally don't ever come over the wire to us and we want it to be as complete as possible. So I think there are a lot of clients, especially in larger companies um, that have big legal operations and, and in-house counsel departments that are thinking about Sally. Um, and so hopefully, you know, that that's coming from a technology standpoint, we are working with Intap to integrate into their open product, um, which is their new business intake system. Um, they were separately already planning on, on having Sally codes available out of the box for their experience product. Um, so we'll be leveraging that when we roll that out. Um, so I think there are, um, there are certainly technology providers um, and in-house legal departments and, um, and some others like Bloomberg um, contributed the courts um, the court structure to the Sally standard. Um, so I think there are, there's certainly a wide variety of participants, um, but mostly it's law firms for now, but, you know, we'd love to see that grow and expand. Uh, sounds fantastic. And just, just for the listeners, just so they know, you're tech agnostic. You don't have a special relationship with any particular Correct. company, even if you're, 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 you know, you're spreading your arms out for everybody, you know. Correct. And the tech, um, and the, the API is, is open and it's free. So um, you can go to the website and see the full um, code set. Um, you know, the, the advantage of being a member, of course, is that you're contributing to the discourse around um, the actual values and fields and, and the like. Um, but looking at the codes and, and being able to download there, um, it's completely open source. And that has always been a goal. I'm guessing this will help with the development of fixed fees, because if you've got standards, you're collecting data, um, it won't be a magical solution, but it, it should at least help, particularly the clients, to kind of nudge the law firms and say, look, we've, we know what you're trying to do. We know what the data is. Could you give us a fixed fee? I mean, presumably this will help. Yes. And because of the way that for our firm, we were coding before, um, we had to really look at lists of matters to try to find like matters at a certain level of granularity. Um, and this standard will dramatically change and improve our ability to number one, get our arms around like matters much faster. And you know, number two, then to see what the associated 
costs were, um, and to be able to then deliver estimates more quickly, to deliver fixed fee pricing with more confidence, um, and you know, a comfort level on both sides. And I guess, I mean, to, to lawyers or managing partners watching this, they might think, why on earth do I want to go down that road? And I guess uh, the answer is in a more competitive environment, uh, you want to move with the market rather than be at the back of the market. And if the market is moving in that direction, then using Sally is going to be a great ally to, to that endeavor because it will provide you with the tools necessary to, to generate um, this, these fixed fees and, and, and other approaches. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. I, I think if you're, if part of your strategy hinges upon a, a certain level of um, bespoke taxonomy and, and sort of keeping things opaque from clients, um, I think you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I'm going to agree with that one. Um, so <laughs> la last of all, so thank you very much, Sean, Kelly, that's great. So look, just for anyone listening who, who doesn't know about Sally and would like to get involved, um, how can people get involved? What, 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 what should they do now if they want to participate? Sure, so I would encourage people to, to go onto the website, which is sally.org, S-A-L-I, um, and you know, feel free, there's, there's contact information um, on the site, and, um, and I'm happy to provide my contact information as well. Um, and, uh, and we'd love it. We'd love for, for the, more, the more the merrier and the better the standard will be. Fantastic, Kelly. It's a great endeavor. Thank you very much for being on ALTV and uh, good luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you, Richard.